favorite drink and some reading snacks oh yeah hello friends and welcome i am so excited right now because it is now 6 30 p.m and at 7 p.m the 24-hour readathon is going to start and believe it or not but this is actually my first ever readathon so I'm super pumped and I'm so ready to start. But I'm not doing this by myself. I am joined by the lovely Tabby from Gryffindor Bookworm. So we've been talking for seven or eight months now. She's my dear YouTube friend. I absolutely love her. And she has the same passions as me, like Harry Potter and books. So, and I don't even know how this idea started. I mean, I remember that we were talking about reading for 24 hours or how other people did it. And suddenly we were doing it ourselves. Our goal for this 24-hour readathon is to read two books by Aaron Morgenstern and those are The Night Circus and The Starless Sea. Am I going to make it? I don't know because these books are quite intimidating but um, I think I can do it. Okay, I'm just gonna send Tabby a message. I'm about to start filming the intro. I'm the intro. <laughs> We're doing the same thing. I'm gonna start with the night circus because the story just seems really interesting. I've got my reading snacks, I got my candle, I have my coffee. I am ready to go. There's only like two minutes left. Oh, I'm getting so nervous. I don't even know why because I'm just gonna read. <laughs> Let the readathon begin. In 8086, a mysterious traveling circus becomes an international sensation, open only at night, constructed entirely in black and white. Le Cirque de Ref delights all who wander its circular paths and warm themselves at its bonfire. Although there are acrobats, fortune tellers and contortionists, the circus of dreams is no conventional spectacle. Some tents contain clouds, some ice. The circus seems almost to cast a spell over its aficionados who call themselves the Reverse, the Dreamers. At the heart of the story is the tangled relationship between two young magicians, Celia, the Enchanter's daughter, and Marco, the Sorcerer's Apprentice. At the behest of their shadowy monsters, they find themselves locked in a deadly contest, forced to test the very limits of the imagination and of their love. Okay, let me just update my good reads. The Night Circus, currently reading. Hey guys, so I just wanted to check in with you and it is now 8 p.m. and I am only 30 pages in um, but that is because I had some distractions um, because my brother just called. Um, I uh, It is very hard for me to share this but my brother has skin cancer and um, it's already a year so I'm kind of used to it as weird as that sounds i'm used to my brother having skin cancer but every time i talk about it it just it gets me very emotional because it's because it's really hard he's my buddy like i go with him to every appointment at least i try to and i try to be there for him uh, as much as i can because i love him so much and he is like my best friend so Yes, yeah, it's, it's been rough and it's kind of been a roller coaster. So like um, almost, I think a month ago now, we got uh, a call from the doctor that it wasn't good, like that the cancer had spread and um, that he didn't know if he was responding to the treatment that he got. And today he got a call that he is responding to the treatment. Yeah. <sighs> so now it's time for me to get on with my reading and not be distracted anymore because I am in a good place right now so I'm gonna keep this energy and keep on reading and I should also give you guys an update on the night circus so as I said I'm only 30 pages in so I don't have that much to report on yet but um, I think the writing style is really beautiful it's unlike anything I've read so far and I really like the aesthetic of the book it is about these two guys that are friends one of them is an enchanter who works at the night circus and he has magic powers and then one day his daughter shows up at age six and he decides to train her 
uh, because he also possesses these magical powers. And then he gives her her ring and she is bound to a game. And then we have his friend in the gray suit, that's how he is described, and he is a sorcerer and accepts the game. And that apparently means that he also needs a student that he can train and it's not clear what the game is but both kids are bound to each other in some way and have to play this game. While I'm waiting for my tea, I thought I would show you guys my little project going on right here. <laughs> this is my uh, 500, yeah, 500 piece puzzle of the Hobbit. So I'm making progress. midnight and I decided to get into my thumper pajamas because I am getting quite sleepy. I'm currently at page 101 and I have to say it's a slow read because I am normally a fast reader but this I, I have to work through it. Although the writing is not that difficult to understand and it's very fluent and beautiful and sometimes almost poetic kind of, but somehow it's just tough to get through it. As I explained in the beginning, we follow these two kids that are meant for this game and they are somehow bound to each other. Well, at the point where I'm at in the book right now, they have met and they are called Marco and Celine? Celia. <laughs> they are called Marco and Celia and they have met at the night circus where they both work and they both know of the game and they, at least Marco knows that Celia is his opponent and they know that the venue where the game takes place is the circus. Um, but that's all we know at the moment. One thing I'm noticing is that in one sentence, the POV can switch like three times. Um, so maybe that's the reason why it's quite hard to get through it. And then there's also the timeline. So you have to pay attention to the dates um, beneath the title, uh, because if you don't notice that, then you are gonna get confused. Okay, so I'm just gonna remove my makeup, go upstairs to bed, read a, a little bit more, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. And 50 pages in the night circus and it is around 11 p.m. so that means I still have a lot of time left for this 24-hour readathon and I think I might finish this in one or two hours and that means I still have six or seven hours left for the Starless Sea so I'm doing okay and I have to say I absolutely love it I mean yesterday I was like mm, and it was kind of hard to get through the story, but now I am just like fully hypnotized by this book. There's the sun. I think yesterday I told you guys that we have two main characters called Celia and Marco, but now I'm beginning to think that this book isn't about main characters. It is about the night circus. So 
you could kind of say that the Night Circus is the main character because that has such a prominent role in the story. And the Night Circus is just so amazing. You have all these different tents. One tent has clouds in it and you can just walk around and another tent has all these bottles and when you open them you smell all these scents that take you to a memory of another person. Um, it's just really whimsical and I, I don't know how she came up with this like the imagination that goes into this story is just absurd like I don't even know how she does it you also have all these amazing characters that can do so many different things like one of them can read the past on a person and then the other can read the future uh, through the stars and then someone else can read the future through tarot cards and then you have our main characters that can manipulate your imagination so they can trick you into thinking that your attention needs to go to a certain place and there was also a point where Celia demonstrated her ability to heal herself which was pretty uh, horrific <laughs> by the way because she took a dagger and she thrust it through her hands and pulls it out and then heals herself um, but yeah she can do that and then there's also the fact that this night circus is apparently the venue of the game so it's almost like a breathing thing where celia and marco have to play this game and all these other characters it almost seems like they are created for the purpose of the game and they are all kind of in this trance of not aging and not thinking for themselves and just being at the night circus it's so weird, but so wonderful at the same time. And I just want to keep reading. I'm going to take a shower, change into uh, normal clothes other than my pajamas. And yeah, I'll check back with you a little bit later. Guess what, guys? I finished the night circus. I am so happy that I did it because this is not an easy read. And I am pretty sure the Starless Sea isn't going to be an easy read as well. Um, what's actually pretty funny is that I messaged uh, Tabby and she is also done with her first book. So yeah, she read the Starless Sea first and I read the Night Circus first, but we both read one book. So it's already a success. I'm very happy with that. I think it's also a very philosophical book and there's definitely a thing going on here with life and death. I have to process my thoughts to give you a better wrap up, which I'll definitely do in my April wrap up. Um, so yeah, it's it's been a journey. <laughs> I have cried, I have laughed. Um, it was very intense to read nonstop. Like yeah, I slept of course, but still, it's very intense to read one book the entire time, and it was so immersive, um, which is a good thing, I guess. But still kind of drained me um but i have quite a few hours left i guess we're gonna start reading the next book <laughs> um wow first i'm gonna eat something because i'm hungry <laughs> and maybe do 20 minutes of puzzling or something just to take my mind off it like off the first book and then i'm gonna start to start the sea so i'll check back with you guys as soon as i have some reading progress When Zachary Rollins stumbles across a strange book hidden in his university library, it leads him on a quest unlike any other. Its pages entrance him with their tales of love-lorn prisoners, lost cities and nameless acolytes, but they also contain something impossible, a recollection from his own childhood. Determined to solve the puzzle of the book, Zachary follows the clues he finds on the cover, a bee, a key and a sword. They guide him to a masquerade ball, to a dangerous secret club, and finally through a magical doorway created by the fierce and mysterious Mirabel. This door leads to a subterranean labyrinth filled with stories, hidden far beneath the surface of the earth. 
Who knew reading was exhausting, guys? <sighs> I mean, oh, my eyes, my head just feels heavy. But I'm gonna keep on reading because I have like three or four hours left. And yeah, I just wanna get further into the start of the seat because I am now currently at page 56 or something, 57. And I like it. I think it's uh, less fake than The Night Circus. The story is about Zachary, who is a 25 year old student and he is a total Ravenclaw, um, which is also mentioned in the book. And he finds a book in the library, which is called Sweet Sorrows, and he's in that book. So there's a chapter about him as a 10 year old boy, and he's just trying to find out how that is even possible. So he's looking for clues and he's following them. And at the point where I'm in the story, he's going to this masquerade ball. Um, because he saw a picture on Google that has some connection with the book that he found uh, where he was in. So it's a story within the story, but then there's mostly the point of view of Zachary so far. And I'm curious where it's gonna go, so I'm gonna keep on reading. Okay, so a little reading update. I am now at page 117. But it is now almost 6 p.m. and my boyfriend is currently cooking uh, and I think he's gonna tell me any minute now that dinner is ready. So that means I have probably a little less than an hour when I get back to reading. Um, so I don't know if I'm gonna get to page 200 but that is gonna be my goal to try and get to at least 200 pages of the start of the sea and honestly I am so proud of myself because I am so tired like my eyes just wanna sleep like I'm awake but exhausted at the same time and I don't think we chose the best books to do a 24 hour readathon because these books are like they have so many layers that's the only way how I can explain it like the, the Night Circus and the Star of the Sea have so many layers and a lot of like different point of views, different storylines. Although I do think that the Star of the Sea is a bit more structured somehow. This book is apparently divided into books. So I have read book one, which was uh, Sweet Sorrows. And that was also the book that Zachary found in which his own story was written if you follow me. And then the uh, second book, which I'm currently reading about, is Fortunes and Fables. So I'm not really sure what the connection is there, but um, apparently that's what this book is. It is a book divided in books, divided in stories, and I have absolutely no clue where it's gonna go. <laughs> okay, come on. Time to eat. it's seven okay i'm just gonna send tabby a message <laughs> girl we are done oh my gosh that was the 24 hour readathon i did it <laughs> it is now exactly 7 p.m and <sighs> we're done oh my gosh that was super intense you guys i like I, I just wanna meditate or something or just get out of the living room. That would be healthy as well. And maybe breathe in some fresh air or something. 24 hours of reading is really something, um, but I, I really enjoyed it. And my goal for the 24 hour readathon has failed because uh, I wanted to read these two books. I read The Night Circus and, and I'm 150 pages in the start of sea, so I'm still very proud of myself and I'm also very proud of Tabby because she also did an awesome job and she even has two kids so I don't even know how she does it but um, yeah she read the entirety of the start of the sea so Tabby well done you're a trooper <laughs> and yeah now we're done and I'm not gonna read anymore at least not today because I have had enough <laughs> 
I didn't think I would say that, but I have honestly had enough of reading for today. Any final update on the Starless Sea? I've made it to page 150 um, and so far it's a really good book. So I will definitely finish this one somewhere in May. I do really love the story. It's very immersive and very um, odd. In between Zachary's story, you have these other stories that are in these books that Zachary is finding. Ah, uh, so yeah, it's really, it sounds really complicated. I don't think it's that complicated though. Uh, I thought the Night Circus was way more complicated because that has so many point of views and is really philosophical, I think. Um, but this one is more straightforward in my opinion and it's a easier read, I guess, because it has less uh, point of views and less storylines. It's just the short stories in between, but I kind of like that because that brings a balance and lets you relax a bit while reading. Uh, so yeah, I, I like it so far and I'm very interested to see where it's gonna go because I absolutely have no clue. What I do know, finally, is why there's a B, a sword and a key on this book and what they represent. They represent the acolytes, the keepers and the guardians in this starless sea, which is a world where doors and dreams and stories come together, I think. So again, a very whimsical and beautifully written story. I can definitely see the resemblance between the Night Circus and the starless sea. And I would love to spend a day in the brain of Aaron Morgenstern. I mean, how does he do this? How does he come up with these amazing worlds and intricate storylines? I don't even know if I told you guys this, but not only was this my first ever 24 hour readathon, it was also my first reading vlog. So I actually never made a vlog. That was stressful because I was thinking while reading how to edit or oh I should film this bit or oh I should film myself reading. It was just a lot going on in my mind. So yeah, I do hope I have enough content to give you guys a good reading vlog. The main reason to do this reading vlog and 24 hour readathon is to motivate you guys to start reading more. Um, and that is such a great activity while staying home. So we hope that we accomplish that. And definitely check out Tavi's vlog as well because she is gonna give you guys an amazing vlog. I just know it. All her videos are hilarious, so much fun, and she is such a great YouTuber. So go to Griffin or Bookworm, watch her vlog. And with that, guys, I'm off. I am done for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this reading vlog, then please give it a thumbs up and let's stay in touch.